In this video, I will show you how I retouch one of my dramatic portraits using Capture One in Photoshop. Adorama TV presents The Breakdown with Miguel Quiles. Welcome back everyone to The Breakdown right here on Adorama TV. I'm your host, Miguel Quiles, and I'm often asked what my process is for retouching portraits, and today, I'm gonna share with you step-by-step step how I go about retouching this dramatic portrait that I shot recently. So let's begin first by talking about the equipment that I'll be using for this retouch. I'll be retouching this image using my MSI GS70 laptop. It's a very, very powerful Windows PC using a Core i7 processor. I use this not only for uh, retouching my images but also for editing my 4K videos. It does an amazing job. The other very, very important item that you need when you're retouching images is a very good tablet. And for me, I use the Wacom Intuos small tablet. So now that we've talked a little bit about the laptop and the tablet setup that I have here, let's go ahead and jump right into Capture One and start retouching our image. Now, this particular photograph was a image that I shot here recently for uh, the recently announced Sony G Master series of lenses and in this case I use the uh, 85 millimeter 1.4 GM lens and so I'm actually going to show you in an upcoming video how I shot this particular image um, on an upcoming episode of the breakdown but in the meantime I'm going to show you how I retouch this image because it is something that I get asked quite a bit so let's go ahead and begin we're here in Capture One 9 and the very first thing that I do once I import my images is to uh, go into this uh, exposure section right here. And I have everything kind of lined up the way that I like to use it. Typically I would start with adjusting my white balance. And if you click on the mode, you'll see a drop down of all of the different types of uh, options that you have for white balance. And since I used a off-camera flash for this image, Usually I'll try daylight first to see what that looks like. And if not daylight, I also like to check out uh, daylight fluorescent just to see what kind of a difference it makes in the image. Um, overall, I'm trying to focus mainly on the skin tones in the image. And of course, the hair is kind of a big feature of this shot. So I do want to make sure that the hair is looking pretty good. Um, I actually also like to manually adjust the white balance. So if I'm going through these different presets and I don't see something that's exactly the way that I want it, um, then I tend to make some adjustments on my own. So I think for this particular shot, uh, we're gonna go to about 5282. 52, and so this for me is uh, kind of a nice place for the white balance where you have some nice warmth in the hair color, some nice color on the skin tones. And um, so that's where we are with white balance. The next thing that I like to do, and in this case, straight out of the camera, we actually got a really good image as far as the exposure is concerned. But if you needed to make adjustments, you could easily just drag this slider up or down to make an adjustment to the exposure. Um, you could also make some adjustments in Photoshop as well. but. In this case, um, the exposure actually came out kind of similar to what I wanted. So we're not gonna actually change the exposure, the contrast, brightness, or saturation. We're gonna leave all of this here by itself. Um, we are gonna adjust the clarity, and pretty much on every image, I usually put at least a plus two for the clarity, and then that way it'll basically add a little bit of detail to the image without really uh, messing up the skin tones. If you go up really high on the clarity, um, it tends to do some really crazy funky things to skin. So you don't want to do that. So I'd say it's right around like a plus two. Uh, we'll go ahead and key that in. So plus two seems to be where I want to be for this particular portrait. All right, so my image is now ready for me to take it into Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is right click on the image and I'm gonna go over to Edit With. And once I click that, there's a dialog box that's gonna open here and it's gonna give you some different options. Um, these are the options that I pretty much use exclusively for retouching my images in Photoshop. So I always export it as a TIFF file, 16-bit color. Uh, option is uncompressed. 
The color profile is sRGB, resolution of 300, scale is fixed, and we're gonna open this with Photoshop CC. So once uh, you plug in all of this information, just hit edit, and you'll see this little activities box open up. It'll take a few seconds, and Photoshop will open up with the image. All right, so here we are in Photoshop, and let's go ahead and get started with the process of retouching this image. The very first thing that I always do when I'm retouching a portrait is to go down here to the very bottom and click on this little folder looking box, and that's gonna create a new group. And I'm gonna title this group, I'm gonna change it from group one to clean up. And then in that folder, I'm gonna go ahead and add a new layer, and this is a blank layer. And I'm gonna title this skin cleanup. So on this skin cleanup layer, I'm gonna do all of my skin retouching for this image. And it's just a plain blank layer. Now for your tools, you wanna to go over to your healing brush tool. That's what we use for all of our uh, skin retouching here for these types of images. And you wanna make sure that, and this is super, super important, that you go and sample all layers. If you do not have sample all layers selected and you start brushing on the skin, nothing is gonna happen because it's just a blank layer. So there's nothing there for it to sample and to, uh, to fix. So make sure that it's sampling all the layers before you begin. Now, we're gonna go ahead and zoom into this image and I'm gonna look around for areas that are uh, basically distracting or things that are not really necessary for a portrait. And we're gonna go ahead and take those things out. So by hitting the... So on the Wacom tablet, there is a little circle that you can use that will zoom into an image, or if you push the center button, you can choose from cycling your layers to changing your brush size to rotating your canvas. In this case, I'm gonna select brush size. And you can see that with the tablet, I can quickly and easily change the size of my brush. So you wanna make the brush just a little bit bigger than the area that you're trying to retouch. So in this case, I wanna get rid of this hair. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sample this piece of skin here by holding down the Alt button on a PC. And of course, this could be different on a Mac. And then I'm just gonna brush over this area. And I'm sampling skin that is nearby and that's similar in texture to the skin that I'm trying to uh, replace. So really quickly, I'm just gonna go over different areas of the face here. Anything that I see that sticks out, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm alt-clicking on a piece of skin that's similar and then just brushing over it. Okay. So once I'm done doing the skin cleanup, I like to turn off the layer by clicking on this little eye next to the cleanup folder and then turning it back on just so that I can see the before and after. I'll look at it far away and then I'll zoom in a little closer, turn it off, turn it on. And I like where we are with that. So that's it for skin cleanup. It's very, very easy. The next step, which is where I spend kind of the majority of my time is with color. And so I'm gonna go back again and create a brand new group. And we're gonna call this color adjustments. The very first adjustment that we're gonna make in this brand new section here is to create a brightness and contrast layer. And we're gonna do that by clicking on brightness and contrast. And what I wanna do with this first layer is I wanna increase the contrast in her hair. Um, so all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of raise up the contrast just to see what it does to the hair all by itself. I'm not looking at the entire image. I'm strictly focusing on the hair for this shot. And right around 49 is where I wanna be. So I'm gonna type 49. And so of course, we're looking at this and you're probably thinking, man, it's kind of like beating up the entire image, right? So. Once you do this, you're gonna see that it creates this layer, this little mask next to your uh, adjustment. So what I always do in this scenario is I'll go to my brush tool 
and I actually only want it to affect the hair. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Control I and that's gonna invert the mask. So it's gonna hide this adjustment that I just made under this black mask. And you'll see if I turn it off and on, nothing happens because it's being hidden under this black mask. So in order to reveal what's under this mask, I'm actually gonna switch to white. So if you hit the X key, it will toggle back and forth from black to white. So I'm gonna hit X to bring up the white brush and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paint over her hair. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna add that contrast that I just added to this layer, but I'm gonna paint it in exactly where I want it as opposed to it being applied to the entire image. I only want the contrast to affect her hair. So we'll go ahead and brush over the hair. And you can see that it's gonna make a really big difference adding this contrast uh, to her hair gonna make it look really really epic so again I'm just brushing this in you also want to make sure you're at hundred percent opacity and hundred percent flow as you do this if for some reason you start brushing and you don't see the changes being made um, it could be that those settings might be at zero or it could be that uh, you're painting black on a black mask in which case that doesn't do anything so just make sure that you're painting with the uh, correct color on the correct color of mask. All right, so there we go. We've added some contrast to the hair and I'm gonna turn that off and turn it back on just so you can see the before and the after. And you can see that it made kind of a big difference on the hair. And if you hold down Alt and click on that little mask, you can see this is uh, kind of the adjustment that I made here. And you can actually paint that in as well. So if you see that uh, maybe there's an area that's not painted in and it's supposed to be. You could just paint right over it. And if I hold Alt and click on that mask again, it'll bring back my image. So again, off and on. So we added a little bit of contrast here to our hair. So now that we've completed that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change this and rename it, I'm gonna put hair contrast. And this is all non-destructive editing, by the way. So if at any point I decided that I wanted to scale this back, I could definitely do that. If I wanted to delete this, I could definitely do that as well. But now that we've named this hair contrast, we're gonna move on to the next step, which is gonna to be to create a color balance layer. So you can click on this little scale icon here that says color balance. And I'm gonna use this color balance layer to adjust the color of the background. So I'm gonna change this name straight away. I'm gonna change it to BG for background. And here's what we're gonna do. These little sliders here can adjust the shadows, the midtones, or the highlights in your image. I'm only gonna adjust the midtones for this particular shot. And I kind of figured out what I wanted my colors to be. Now, if I slid this around, you can see, if I kind of move this over to the cyan side, it adds cyans into the midtones. This adds reds into the midtones. And of course, it's doing it to the entire image, but we're only focusing on the background at this point. So all I'm really concerned about is the background because again, using the technique that I showed you, we're just gonna paint over the mask and apply it or remove it from the areas that we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down to negative 33, and I'm actually just gonna type negative 33, uh, negative 10, and positive 14. And this is uh, just some testing that I did prior to recording the video. I like the way that this color uh, came out for the background. So now that we have that, I have an option. So I can either paint black on this white mask and basically mask her out, or I can invert this mask and basically paint on the background to bring that color back. So really in this scenario, it's probably easier for me to just go ahead and mask her out. So I'm gonna hit X to change my color to black because now I'm painting on a white mask and I'm gonna make this brush a little bigger and I'm just gonna color, just drawing over her, bringing her back. So now this adjustment is only gonna be on that background, 
All right, so now I have masked her out and now the adjustment should only be uh, applied to the background here. So if I hit Alt again, I'm holding down Alt and clicking on the mask, I could take a look and see what areas are being masked out. If there was any white showing in this black area and it was a part that was supposed to be masked out, again, you can just paint on it and it will get rid of it. You hold down Alt and click on the mask again and you can bring that back. So again, at this point, this is our color adjustments right now. We've added contrast to the hair and we've changed the color of the background. All right, so for this next step, I'm gonna actually change the color of her eyes a little tiny bit. I wanna bring out some additional blues in her eyes. So I'm gonna create another color balance layer. And for this one, we're gonna leave the uh, mid-tone selected and I'm gonna plug in these numbers. And again, these are numbers that I had come up with uh, just before recording the video. These were the colors that I felt were the colors that I wanted to work with. So again, your colors could be different. You can play around with your sliders and find the colors that you like. So again, it's applying this to the entire image. We don't want that because I just want to adjust the eyes. So I'm going to actually name this eyes. And once again, we're going to make sure that we've selected our layer mask and I'm going to hold down control I on a PC and that's going to hide that entire adjustment behind a black mask. And now I'm going to switch to a white brush and I'm going to zoom in to her eye and I'm going to paint this just in the eye. So as you can see, it's gonna change it from the color that it's at right now to this kind of a deeper blue color. And I'm gonna make sure I'm painting just within the eye and do the same thing here. And now you're probably looking at this and you're thinking, man, that's like way too intense. That's too much of a, too, too much of a contrast, too different than uh, what it actually is. And that's okay. If you zoom out, you'll see a little bit too blue it doesn't look very natural so what we can do is if we click on the opacity of this particular layer it's at hundred percent right now we can actually drop this down to let's say 29 percent and now at 29 percent it looks a little bit more realistic so again we'll turn it off and we'll turn it on the next thing that I'm gonna do is to kind of adjust the color of her lips and to add a little bit more vibrance to that. And in order to do that, we're gonna click on the Vibrance layer. And here, we're actually gonna go ahead and we are going to increase the vibrance. And again, you could usually do this to taste. So if you go really high, you can see it makes the lips super, super red. And if I go low, it'll almost make it into a black and white type of image. So I'm gonna bring the lips to maybe a plus 31. And again, I'm only looking at the lips here because that's the only thing that I want to adjust with this layer. And turning it off and on, you'll see it just adds a little bit of red. I'll zoom in so you can see the difference. I'm gonna turn it off, turn it on. So it just adds a little tiny bit of red to the lips. And so again, we're gonna hit Control I so we can hide that adjustment behind a black mask. And with a white brush, guess what? Once again, we're gonna paint over the lips with the white brush and it's gonna reveal that little adjustment below the mask. So now we can add a little bit more uh, vibrance to her lips. So again, before and after, before and after. And we're gonna change this to lips so that I know later on that is what that layer is affecting. Now you're probably gonna notice, I'm gonna turn off all of the layers here. Let's uh, show you where we're at so far. So before, and after, before, after. And you're gonna notice that most of these adjustments that I'm gonna make for the rest of the video, they're very minor. There's nothing, uh, no big adjustments that I'm making all at once. I'm making very selective adjustments, all in a non-destructive fashion that I can adjust later on if necessary. So for the next step, we're gonna add some contrast to the background. And this is actually gonna be really simple. We're gonna go ahead and click on that brightness contrast layer once again. And we're only trying to adjust this blue background. And so I'm gonna raise up the contrast a little bit and try to figure out, I think at maybe 27, the background looks like it's got some nice contrast to it. We'll turn it off, 
turn it on. So I think that looks good on the background, but it may be again a little bit too harsh on her. So we already created a mask earlier where we had masked her out for the background. And it's really cool. In Photoshop, you can actually use that same mask again if you hold down the Alt key. And again, this is all on a PC. You'll have to check and see what it's like on a Mac. But you hold down Alt and you will click on the mask and drag it to the mask above and let it go. And you'll see it'll say replace layer mask. I'm going to hit yes. So now that we've copied that, you can see that it's basically just masked her out uh, from the background. So it's only affecting this background. So this is great. So again, this is where we are. And if I hold down Alt and click on this little eye next to the background, we can see everything that we've done so far. That's the before, that's where we started, and here's the after. So you can see we've done quite a bit in a fairly short period of time. Now, the next thing that I wanna do is, uh, I wanna add some color to her skin, cause she's looking, uh, compared to the saturation of colors in the background and her hair, she's looking a little bit pale, and I wanna fix that. So what we're gonna do is, at the very top here, I'm gonna add a photo filter layer. And you just click on photo filter, and actually this first layer works pretty good. It's warming filter 85. But as you can see, if I turn this off and on, you're gonna notice that again, it's affecting the entire image and I may not necessarily wanna do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Control I because we're gonna hide that entire layer. We're gonna hide that behind a black mask. And once again, we're gonna brush over just the skin. Now, just to make sure, once again, I'm gonna hold down Alt and click on the mask. And you can see, again, I mentioned earlier, if you have an area that's supposed to be painted and it's not, you can just paint over it in this mode. So it makes it kind of easy for you to see what your mask looks like. So if I hold down Alt and click on that mask again, we've seen the adjustments. And again, turning everything off and turning it back on, you can see where we are at with our adjustment. And I'm gonna go ahead and rename this layer and I'm gonna put warm skin. Now for the last part, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna brighten her skin because I wanna make sure that the focus of this image is gonna be on her face. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a curves layer and I'm gonna try to raise up the shadows just a tiny bit. This isn't gonna be a, a, a huge adjustment but it's gonna be great to make sure that we draw attention to her face and just to her in general. So I'm gonna raise up the shadows just a tiny bit. And just like we've been doing pretty much the entire time, we make this adjustment layer, we hold Control I, we're gonna hide the adjustment, we're gonna take a white brush, because again, black mask, you wanna use the opposite, so we're using a white brush and we're gonna increase the size of the brush. And all I'm gonna do is just paint over her face, her neck and her chest. All right, so we've made this adjustment here and as you can see, it's, uh, <laughs> it's brightened her up a little bit more than what we would probably want. So what I will typically do is I'll go to the opacity and I'll just drop the opacity and I'll bring it to a level to where I feel like it looks natural. So right around 16%, if I turn this off and turn this on, you can see it just brightens her up just the smallest little bit. And I'll go ahead and zoom out on this image here so we can see this once again. Here's the before, here's the after. All right, everyone, so there you have it. That is my technique, a non-destructive way for you to edit and retouch your images using Capture One and Photoshop. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you leave a like or leave a comment on the video. Make sure that you subscribe to Adorama TV's YouTube channel. And also don't forget to check out the Adorama Learning Center that has tons and tons of great photography articles on their website. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you again next time right here on The Breakdown on Adorama TV. Bye everybody. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. 
Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use AdoramaPix.com.